So, um, today we're talking about Evolve again because it's back, which doesn't really make sense, but bear with me, we'll get through it. So, um, I think Evolve, I can't remember whether it was 75 or 80% off in the Steam sale. But they were still charging full price for it. Um, if you wanted to buy it outright. I don't know where the stats are actually, you know, available for it. Um, as in what price it was before it got taken down from Steam. Admittedly, this is Steam only so far. It doesn't affect the console versions. But... Uh, Evolve got pulled from Steam. And at time, at first, it was basically, it was like, why has this been removed? And then some people would argue because nobody was playing it, because um, according to Steam charts, and I'm getting all my stuff off the Eurogamer pages that have come over about this article over the last week, um, when it came out last February 2015, uh, it had... An average player base of about 9,000 users on its opening day. But its most recent average month was apparently 105 with a peak of 234. So basically, nobody was interested in it. And there's probably quite a fair few reasons for it, but either way, uh, basically, yeah, it was the best-selling retail game in the UK for the month of February last year, and I think it was second best-selling game for February uh, 2015 in America. I'm not sure what else would have been with it off the top of my head. Uh... Trying to think of the other games that came out last February. Quick to my chart. <laughs> Don't know why I'm doing this, because I should be prepared. But I never am. You know this, if you've been watching a lot of these videos. Never am prepared. Uh, we just save that and move that over. I'm going to go through my list. Because <clears throat> stupid old me puts all the release dates out so I know what's coming up. I'm probably going to do one of those videos coming up soon because, one, I've got to fill for time uh, before I go off to the conventions and stuff, and while Owen's away, so there's going to be some content there. Uh, let me have a look. 2015 games. Let me look through the list uh, of big games. Uh, Dying Light, possibly. That did come out. Very late January, so that could have been it. I doubt it was uh, Resident Evil. It might have been Borderlands Handsome Collection. Dark Souls, I don't think... Well, Dark Souls 2, the DLC, I don't think it was like till April-ish, so... Uh, let me have a look through the other ones. Bloodborne wasn't till April. Order 1886, it might have been that. Possibly, because I know that came out in February. Because um, I doubt it was Mario Party 10. <clears throat> but, either way, as I've done that for no reason. Uh, they announced apparently as well 2K that it sold 2.5 million copies, or sort of shifted 2.5 million copies to retailers. How many of them sold? Who knows? But, either way, it disappeared. Uh, on Wednesday. But at the same time, the Evolve website had a countdown timer to Thursday with the hashtag stage up. And the revelation was that Evolve is now Evolve Stage 2, and instead of being pay so much for the thing, it is free to play. 
Now, the reason why it failed, probably mainly for PC, because there's a lot of craziness with that, compared to console DLC. But, but yeah, DLC was the main problem. So, there is three different versions that you can get, along with the Season Pass. So, that's technically four. So, the Hunting Season Pass had four playable hunters and three monster skins when the game launched. Uh, but there's a digital deluxe edition which also in includes them together and whatever. But then there's a monster race edition which has even more content and savings apparently which is included a fifth monster two additional hunter characters and four monster skins exclusive to those people that buy that version of the game. So yeah, there was basically... D there was so much DLC, it was convoluted. And then when you got into the game... The majority of the DLC, and this, you know, the majority of the stuff that they were pushing in sort of DLC packs were skins. And this was still at the time where it was like, why are you charging for this? Yeah, it wasn't like um, it is with Overwatch in that it's a superficial, you know, it's still a problem and it still really shouldn't exist, but... If you take into account that people can pay if they want to to unlock stuff rather than earn their way through the game in order to do stuff, it's not so bad. But the fact that that sometimes was bundled together with skins for characters, it wasn't just like gun skins, which most people would go as useless unless it's Counter-Strike. Huh, that's funny. Um, I said I wouldn't mention that. <laughs> wow. I can't be bothered. There's too much. There's enough people that are already talking about that. Um, and trust me, I was so tempted to go with all the crazy horror stories of Pokemon Go, but I'll let that settle. And I, I don't think I'm going to play it. But yeah, if I'm desperate at the convention, you know, if the queues are that long, it'll be just be whatever. Anyway, back to where I was with Evolve. There's a lot of DLC, a lot of confusion, a lot of craziness with the fact that all this pro content was promised but the idea is you know when it's done it's done so there's not even sort of like a date in essence it's sort of like what you got with the fallout 4 season pass in which you didn't really know what was coming you're just getting all the content with it those people that have got it considering what's coming over the upcoming months it's a pretty good deal, and apparently they might even be doing a second season pass because they're going to do so much content for that instead. But th the way it was done here was, <clears throat> it was like you get, like, in order to get it, you could buy it to get the DLC, but the thing is, when you pre-ordered it or bought it, in some cases, those characters wouldn't be unlocked until they're ready. But the way it was presented was as if you're getting them basically early, which you weren't. And basically, understandably, um, Turtle Rock were basically saying it was 2K's fault because, you know, they were selling it, they were the publisher, whereas Turtle Rock was the developer. Who, uh, at the time, Phil Robb said, Ultimately, Turtle Rock makes the games we don't sell them, and as developers, we've done our best to make a game that people want to play. We then have to trust our publisher to make the best decision on how to sell the game. Which, basically, it fell flat. I don't know how it's done in terms of consoles, but in terms of uh, player base of the PC, I believe like some of the numbers I've heard from Turtle Biscuit are it's had a 98% 98% drop since day one. 
So only 2% of loyal evolvists, if it, that's even a word, play that game on a regular basis. So, uh, Turtle Rock did a, a community blog. And thankfully, unlike a lot of the stuff in this industry, uh, it was not uh, bullshit and whatever. Uh, let's see if I can... Yeah, so when you first go into their offices, you see a whole ton of awards. You know, Evolve got 65 nominations and awards at various trade shows. It was the first title in its hit in their history. You know, even with the like stuff of like for Left 4 Dead to get game on the show at Gamescom in Germany and E3 in LA. Uh, games development is an art, and what artist doesn't love having their work appreciated? When people first started playing Evolve at those and other conferences, it was magical. Sure, there was the hype surrounding the title. Yes, we had the flashy displays, the giant statues, and all the other trip things that AAA games could do to get people excited. And that was cool. But what we lived for was just seeing people play Evolve for the first time. We worked on it for years, and suddenly people got to experience our game controller in hand. There was genuine excitement, real joy when people played. It was nothing, no, like, nothing like they'd ever played before, and watching it happen was like no high we'd ever felt. Which, I will admit... When I first played it, uh, what was it, April 2014, um, it was pretty fun. It seemed pretty cool. And then when I played it September 2014, it felt really like, so it's been... I'm trying to think, it, was, it would have been April to September, so it's been four or five months, and I really don't notice the difference that much. If this is how it's developed, and then of course it got delayed then from late, like October when it was supposed to be going, to February, and I was immediately thinking. It was, very, you know, after playing it a second time, again with different people. And I think, actually, I played it twice at the ver at the first time uh, two years ago. And even on that second time, probably then, I was like... I think one time I played basically as one of the hunters, and then the other time I played as the monster, just to see what it was like. And, um, yeah, it was a thing. Because, you know, by the end it was like, okay, so if, unless people switch round roles and whatever, it's going to get very samey. Regardless of your skill level and getting skills or whatever. And that I always feel was going to hurt it. I didn't think it would go to the extent that it did, because as they continue on in the statement, when Evolve launched, the reception wasn't what we accept, expected. Sure, there was good reviews, but there was also bad reviews. There was excitement, there was also disappointment for players and for us. And this is a brilliant quote. The DLC shitstorm hit full force and washed away people's enthusiasm, dragging us further and further from that first magical pick-up-and-play experience. We want that magic back, and we aim to make it happen. We made a lot of changes, improvements, and additions over the past year, and we've got a lot more coming. So basically, Stage 2 is basically the Game of the Year edition, technically. So, in some of the examples, they're reworking Hunter classes to make it team less reliant on having experienced trappers and medics. So it's actually more arcadey and more anybody can pick it up and play and do good. <clears throat> improvements to the maps and UI, improving load times and performance, uh, improving stability and fixing bugs, reworking progression and tutorials, and adding more customization. 
but yeah. Uh, we they, basically it says, you know, what does it all mean? You know, we're taking Evolve in the direction a lot of you suggested. Evolve is free to play on PC. No buy-in or box required. So basically, as of now, what's up there, although it is Evolve, technically it's a public beta. So it's sort of early access. So basically, over time, it will be the proper one. Uh, the interesting twist, for anybody that did own it outright, they will get founder status. So all the content crosses over into the new version. And so they're really being more active on the community. And they finish off here saying, We've lived and breathed Evolve for over four years, and we feel like we're just getting started. Since launch, we realize it's provided people some of the most exciting gaming moments and wanted to make more of them for anyone. Well, anyone who's okay with being periodically murdered brutally by terrifying alien monsters. Which is fair. But, yeah. They're basically admitting that 2K did not help their cause. Because I think that what's in there is a good game, but certainly the system that it was on was not really going to be working. Uh, the big thing as well that they've noted is all the DLC for people that are picking it up the first time will be unlocked for free. And they have basically said that uh, once they've got through the beta for the PC platform, the aim will be for the PS4 and Xbox One versions to also be free to play as well. Which, you know, makes sense. And it seems to have worked. Because uh, before it went... It had 157 players for the day. Thursday or Friday, I guess Friday because it was the stats from the day before, it was 25,167, which is interesting because that is two or three times more than the peak that the PC platform had when the game came out right or got released out right in February 2015. Um, oh, apparently its first launch did peak at 27,000, but burned out quick. But because it's free to play, you know, you could argue, you know, if anybody can sort of play it without having to, you know, pay for something, there's the possibility it might have so a bit more attention rather than going from 27,000 all the way down to 100. So yeah, it's, it's interesting because you've you, we've seen quite a bit of this with the free to play genre, uh, to some extent. Um, Old Republic is free to play, but there's still sort of a subscription base to it. Uh, I think they keep. I mean, I don't think World of Warcraft free to play, even like to a certain level. And if it is, they don't really harp on about it, they just keep pushing about subs subscriptions and all that. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online ditched its subscription stuff to go free to play, but then in turn, sort of like Star Wars has a subscription thing where people can get stuff early or access things like that. Um, Evolve has needed this for a while, at least on the PC platform. Because, you know, if there's like 127 people playing, I mean, if it's four versus one, that's five. So there'd be two people waiting for a long time. I mean, I guess it'd be easy to find games because there wouldn't be that many players. I don't know how many servers they've got dedicated to it. But, uh, yeah. Um, I think... I, I think the approach that they've done is uh, is the right thing to do with the time frame. Whether the game was a success or not, 
I think that, in essence, you need to do the same as what Adele has done. So, Adele, November. Weird comparisons here, but it sort of fits. In November, she did her new album, 25. And the only play, you know, it wasn't available on any of the streaming sites. It wasn't available through Google, through Amazon, through Spotify, uh, through Tidal, you know, any of those other services. The only way you could get it is by, you know, buying it on disc or buying it digitally. You know, through Amazon and whatever, but there were there wasn't a way that you could listen to it for free. In, in order to basically have the right to listen to it, you had to pay for it. Admittedly, there were some places that did have it on offer at various points over, I think, the holiday. Or I think it was like 99p or £2 or £3 at least in UK currency. Which, if you're going by Brexit, is now worth about $17 billion. Probably. Uh, but eventually, which uh, would be a couple of weeks back, uh, when she was headlining the Glastonbury Music Festival here in the UK, she announced that, or her management or whatever, announced that that Friday, so I think that would have been the like 24th of June, a couple of weeks back, the album was available on all these streaming sites for free. You know, so, I'm trying to think, that would have been June, November. So, for six or seven months, there was a lot of sales of it. Since her gig at Glastonbury, sales have gone up as well, crazily. Which is understandable, because normally acts at big music festivals... I don't know if it happens in the US charts when there's like Coachella and various concerts like that, but certainly over here, acts that play at the Glastonbury Festival see an up spike in uh, listeners and whatever after the fact, because people are like, that was awesome. But yeah, the approach I'm trying to say is for seven months, they made the money that they wanted off it, which was probably a metric shit ton. But then, eventually, they decided, you know, we'll still get some money. Obviously, it won't be as much because, but then people could still buy it if they wanted to, which they clearly have been because it's been doing well in the chart, at least over here. But it, providing it for free it's getting a lot more traffic to it. In fact, they pretty much said that if it wasn't for the fact that streaming wasn't counted in the charts over here, I'm not sure whether it is in Billboard yet, probably is. Uh, if it wasn't for the streaming, she would have been, I think, still number one in terms of the album uh, release, like going back up to number one, but... Because of the streaming figures, she was like, that That was number two. And number one was like, yeah, beyond the camera. She went that far ahead. <laughs> so, in essence, that's what they're trying to do here. Whether it's Turtle Beach or more likely 2K. Although, you could argue, you know, they wouldn't like the, the free-to-play model. In terms of... Um, they obviously won't be getting revenue. I'm guessing there's going to be some sort of DLC in there for those people that are new players, like me, that can't be bothered to wait. And actually, I might go and... I don't know if I can quickly look at that. Because I'm intrigued. Because, <clears throat> well, I'm intrigued for a reason. But that's the end of the video. But that's coming up in a minute, so don't worry. Uh, the DLC is not listed. Which is interesting. Uh, Evolve Steam 
Should I just search Evolve Team DLC? That might be easier. <clears throat> that redirects. Can I go to a cash version? Where it's got a list of how much it was. So this is all American money. So yeah, um, the season pass was $15. Then season two was $25. So it does. It does. It looks like if there is any DLC, in terms of if you want to unlock stuff, it's probably in game. So it's done sort of not for actual stores through DLC and all that, which is interesting but understandable. Except, um, little old me worked out. There's a good old loophole. <clears throat> and it's called this. Yeah. You know, these physical games with physical boxes that nobody bought. They just so happen to have, you know, codes in them, whatever. I don't know why I'm not showing you the codes, because I've already redeemed them, but... Either way, you know, they've got codes in on the back of books, you know, with the white box at the bottom. Um, and in doing so, by buying this, having it shipped to me Friday morning, so literally the day after it's gone free to play, um, buying this getting the code, putting it in, I have found a status. So, all the stuff that I've unlocked in the game is available to me from the off. The thing is, if you look at the way it's presented, founders get all the content outright. So, the fact that this physical copy cost me just under five pounds so what seven I'm trying to think it's twelve fifteen is twelve so six is to I can't do math six is to seven fifty so yeah let's say just let's say about six dollars six seven dollars for that much, I got founder status, even though um, I haven't opened... Well, I opened it to get the code, but I haven't even played it, because this rig... That I, yeah, you can see that this rig isn't that good. Look at the quality of the image that you're looking at. That's the best it can do. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, in case you're wondering when this image will get better, you know... Tell Windows to stop wanting Windows 10 on new computers. Because then I might be able to install the new one with Windows 7 and not get bombarded with Windows 10, Windows 10, Windows 10. So yeah, the moral of the story is, if you're lazy... Because the fact is they were also selling uh, codes for this game on Amazon for £25. For 5 I got this with a code anyway, physical discs, which I guess you could use as coasters, or I guess you could, no, you need to be playing it on Steam anyway. Well, that's a thing. Either way, um, you know, that's how I've got founder status. Well, I don't know whether it does unlock everything outright. I'll probably get to the aim and find out, you know, it does nothing, but the fact of the matter is, you know, I physically have it. I do like having physical stuff. The likelihood of this being in any sort of indie box, considering it's from a AAA publisher like 2K, is none. Um, but yeah. Uh, I guess it's just me sort of... I can't say boasting about this, because... I'll probably get to it and play it and be like, why was I suckered in with all the hype? 
just like everybody else at those conventions. Note to developers, be careful of me in August and September. Because if you try and overhype stuff, um, not that many people will pay attention to this channel because it barely gets any views. Um, I will be forthright in saying what I feel. Because I feel I need to now. Because... I'm sort of getting to the point where games need to be treated need to be treated with a lot more respect and care and attention than the majority of the big conglomerate media publishers do so. Is it a threat? No. It's a statement. That sounded a bit serious.